a warm welcome to Moment of Truth. It's Yusuf Yakubu Fise coming your way this week with another message, an interesting one. But then before then, let's approach the throne of grace in prayers. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the grace given unto us to teach your word, to discuss your word, and to share it. Marvelous Jehovah, we ask for your blessings. You said your word which you speak, their life and their spirit. I pray that your spirit and life will enter into the lives of all our dear followers. That as many as are part of this week's message, they will be blessed in the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Redeemer. Fellow followers, we appreciate you. We love you for being part of what God is doing. We're doing the same thing. We're sharing the word of God so that mutually we're all blessed. Last week, we talked about um, the fact that it is not a sin to ask for rewards. And the topic was ask for a reward. I'm sure as we have all learned that God is not against our asking for rewards. You will continuously ask God. Put your trust in him. This week, we're talking about an encounter. And the topic is the price and the prize of an encounter with God. You are able to double the legacies handed over to you once you understand that the Lord God is with you. And when you understand that, it takes you to the realm of being bold enough to ask for rewards. Remember that Nehemiah, after walking and serving his people in the rebuilding of the walls of uh, Jerusalem, he asked God. There was a special prayer Nehemiah made. He said, Lord, remember me for good. And so today we want to a little bit move forward by saying that your ability to receive rewards is dependent and determined by the encounter that you have with the living God. And so when you have an encounter with God, your reward increases. And your ability to double the legacies that are handed over to you increases. You cannot, if you don't have an encounter with God, you cannot double the legacies that are handed over to you. And you will not be bold enough to ask for a reward because you have done nothing. And so today we want to be talking about the things that happen when you have an encounter with God. There is a price and then there is a prize. Two things are involved. Every encounter with God must leave a proof. That's what we want to talk about today. And so we're taking a bit of a study of the life of Jacob. In Genesis 28 verse 10 to 18, we see Jacob running away from his brother Esau. He got to a given place and was so tired he slept off and had a dream. In the dream he saw a ladder that descended right from heaven downwards. Angels were descending and ascending, descending and ascending. And in that dream, he saw God Almighty on top of the ladder. And God assured him, I'll be with you, I'll bless you wherever you go, and you'll come back again to this land. That was a dream. There are two stages of an encounter. The first encounter is by way of dreams, by way of visions, by way of desires. We see certain things that we feel, oh, we want to step into that. Jacob was at that first stage in Genesis chapter 28. His dream was not a reality yet. It was the beginning of an encounter with God. And when you go to Genesis chapter 32 verse 26, in fact from 24 to 26, again Jacob was now returning from his uncle Laban and already was blessed. He had two bands, he had two sets of wealth, he separated them and then withdrew himself to go and seek the face of God. Because he was afraid of an encounter with his brother. 
You see, the, the, the interesting thing is that you need to first have an encounter with God before you have an encounter with men. But a lot of us make the mistake of have organizing encounters with men, with great men, great women. We plan everything before we go to see the face of God. And then we get disappointed because we didn't go through God. And so Jacob was wise enough to say, look, before I meet my brother Esau, who probably is still harboring malice, let me have an encounter with God. And so an interesting encounter occurred here. And that's what we're going to dwell on today. I beg you, just give us a bit of your attention. In Genesis 32 verse 26, Jacob wrestled with a divine supernatural being. He asked the man, what is your name? The man said, why are you asking me my name? You, what is your name? He said, his name is Jacob. An interesting thing happened there. And so Jacob held tight onto this divine being. And by early morning, the being asked him, he said, let me go. Jacob said what? I will not let you go until you bless me. It happened to be God. And God changed his name. God blessed him. And so there is a proof of a real encounter. And then we're going to be talking about some of the things that happened there. Now, the real encounter is the second stage of an encounter. It's not like the stage of dream. You pay for it daily. You pay for it and we're going to see that today. So, number one thing that we should take home this week is, once you have an encounter with God, there are basic things that will happen. Number one, his change of name. Jacob's name was changed to Israel. That you wrestle with angel, you wrestle with God, and you overwhelmed, you prevail. There was a change of name, a transformation. It is possible that you're going through what you're going as a result of your name. Every name carries an import, a significance. It's either to promote or to bring you down. And so Jacob had a change of name. The number two thing that happened was Jacob had a trauma. God had to talk at the whole of his own socket. And so from that moment, Jacob had to uh, limp. That was an encounter. It's the price. He had to pay for it. He received the blessing as a prize as a reward, but then had to limp all through his lifetime. There are certain traumas that come our ways, and I want to tell you today, they will be blessings. They will be blessings. As we share in the lives of some of the people we're talking about today, you will understand. Jacob was not concerned. He did not complain to God for touching his, uh, his waist. Or creating a hollow there that made him to live. He was mostly interested in the blessings that followed. God blessed him mightily, changed his name. From there he was bold enough to meet with his brother. What was it again that happened to Jacob? Jacob was humbled. It brought about humility. When you have an encounter with God, you become humbled. Whether you like it or not, you become humbled. The next lesson we want to take home is every blessing must be protected by God. Was Jacob not blessed? Why did he have to ask God, bless me? He said, except you bless me in Genesis chapter 32 verse 26, he said, except you bless me, I will not let you go. Why? Because the blessings that Jacob had before that second stage of an encounter needed godly divine protection. Remember already he had two bands that he had already separated and sent them ahead before he withdrew to seek that second stage of an encounter with God. That's the stage at which you have to pay. There are prices you have to pay for that second stage. Without God's blessings, protection, all that we gain can easily be lost. And so Jacob received favor. That was the additional thing that Jacob received as a result of that second stage of an encounter with God. He received 
proper blessings and he received full protection and favor. As soon as he met his brother, the brother favored him. Anger was lost. Why? Because Jacob had an encounter with God, real encounter. Take the example of Saul of Tarsus. This was a man that persecuted the church. He collected letters from the high priest, went about persecuting the way, the people of God. But when he had a divine encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ on his way to Damascus, Saul of Tarsus became poor. He was so enriched, but he had to lose his sight temporarily. That was a proof of his encounter. What was that all about? It was a sign of humility. The Lord humbled him. Every encounter with the living God will leave you humbled. And so when you see, you meet men and women of God who tell you that, oh, they are proud over their achievements, they are proud over this and that. Oh, I often tell them, I say, go and ask Paul of Tarsus. Philippians chapter 3 verse 8. Paul himself said, I count all that I've achieved as nothing but dung so that I can win Christ. Every encounter with God leaves you humbled. So you have to ask yourself, are you really humbled? If you are not, you've not had an encounter with him yet because it's not by power, it's not by might, but by the spirit of the living God. What next happens? when you have an encounter with God. There can be a loss of worldly possessions. In 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 19, Elijah was about to finish his assignment. He anointed Elisha, who served as his own servant throughout. It said that he poured water on the hands of the prophet Elijah. This was an elderly man. The word of God in 1 Kings chapter 19, verse 19 says what? Elisha already had 12 yoke oxen that he was plowing his own land. He had his business settled, but he had to abandon everything. He had to turn everything into God. Same with Peter. When Peter had a real encounter with Jesus Christ, he had to surrender his boat. He was humbled because he had fished throughout with, by his strength, by his knowledge, and he got nothing but an encounter with Christ humbled him all his arguments as to his expertise in fishing were torn aside and he had to surrender unto our Lord Jesus Christ there could be loss of relationship by the time you have a real encounter with God it's part of the price that we have to pay loss of relationship people you love people you so much care about the word of God will tell you that an encounter with him will tell you that there's nothing common between light and darkness you're compelled to leave some clubs to leave some friendships to leave some class of persons because you are no longer the same you become a new being in 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17 you say all things have passed away you become a new being. You lose the relationship with those persons that you thought you could not do without. There are some men you have to just stay away from them. Some women you have to stay away from them. Some friends you just have to stay away from them because of a real encounter with God. Peter, in Mark chapter 10, verse 28, for those of you that were opportuned to follow last week's message, uh, you know, Peter asks our Lord Jesus Christ, he said, we have left homes, we've left wives, we've left children. What is in there for us? There was need for them to leave everything and come to establish a new relationship. And what was the gain? The prize that you get for leaving the old friendship is that you get a hundredfold of the same set of things you lose as a result of the real second stage of an encounter with God. You gain a hundredfold on earth here and in the world that is to come.
Sometimes you even lose children. It's not the desire of God that we should lose children. But he becomes dear to you. He becomes more important than every other thing. The encounter Abraham had with God, prior to the time that he went to Mount Moriah with Isaac, it wasn't, it was just the first stage, stage of vows, stage of promises. But when God called him and said, bring your son Isaac and offer him, for me, that was the second stage of real encounter of Abraham with God. Just like Jacob. In Genesis chapter 28, Jacob only had a dream, a glimpse of what God is all about to do. He vowed to God. But at the second stage, he left with a, a sunken hollow in his own socket. Why? Because God was about to do something. The Lord humbled Abraham on that Mount Moriah. God proved to him that I can provide. He took the knife to kill his son. God said, yes, I know you're mine. You're ready to walk with me right now. Are you ready to walk with God? Are you ready to lose every other thing for the sake of this master? There's a price to pay. And there's a price to be won when you have a real encounter with God. In conclusion, I want to take your mind again to Genesis chapter 28. I call it the battle stage of an encounter with God. By the time Jacob woke up from his dream, he called up less Bethel. This must be the house of God. Then there's the penial experience. That's the real stage of experiencing an encounter with God. That is the time you go humbled, you go transformed, you go with a change of name, and then blessings are showered upon you. At that stage, you're able to meet with any person, with any government. You're able to meet with your enemies because you are empowered. The apostles have their second stage of an encounter. In Acts of Apostles chapter 2, when the Holy Ghost came upon them all, they were no longer the same. So all the time they walked with Jesus Christ, there was no real encounter yet until after the Holy Spirit came upon them. Are you ready to also receive? or have experienced an encounter with God, real encounter with God, I promise you there's going to be a transformation in your life, in your marriage, in your community. Every nation that has an encounter with God experiences a transformation, experiences a growth, economic growth. An encounter with God leaves you transformed. Thank you so much for being part of this. I pray for you. When you surrender your life, to God, to our Lord Jesus Christ, all things about you, every other old thing becomes a thing of the past. My prayer for you today is please leave hand over every other thing to our Lord Jesus Christ. Your life, your family, your relationships, hand them over. Bow down at his knees. Accept him as your only savior and you will have a change of name. You will have a humble way of life and at the same time, your names will be changed. You'll be a transformed person. Father, I pray for your children. As many as surrender unto you, let them enjoy. Let them have the grace to pay the price of an encounter with you. And let them have the grace to receive the prize for an encounter with you. We thank you forevermore. Till I come your way next week, it's Yusuf Yakubo Fisa with the moment of truth. Thank you. God bless you. Shalom.